Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of our faith. <coughs> I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. See, the days are coming. It is the Lord who speaks, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, but not a covenant like the one I made with their ancestors on the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant of mine, so I had to show them who was master. It is the Lord who speaks, no, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel when those days arrive. It is the Lord who speaks. Deep within them, I will plant my law, writing it on their hearts. Then I will be their God, and they shall be my people. There will be no further need for neighbor to try to teach neighbor, or brother to say to brother, learn to know the Lord. No, they will all know me, the least no less than the greatest. It is the Lord who speaks, since I will forgive their iniquity and never call their sin to mind. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, a pure heart create for me, O God. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not deprive me of your Holy Spirit. A pure, a pure heart, heart create, create for, for me, me, O God. God. Give me again the joy of your help. With a spirit of fervor, sustain me, that I may teach transgressors your ways and sinners may return to you. A pure heart create for me, O God. For in sacrifice you take no delight. Burnt offering from me you would refuse. My sacrifice, a contrite spirit, a humbled contrite heart, 
you will not spurn. A pure heart create, create for me, O oh God. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he put this question to his disciples. Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, some say he is John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, he said, who do you say that I am? Then Peter, Simon Peter spoke up. You are the Christ, he said, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you are a happy man because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. So I now say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. Then he gave the disciples strict orders not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to make it clear to his disciples that he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer grievously at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, to be put to death and to be raised up on the third day. Then taking him aside, Peter started to remonstrate with him. Heaven preserve you, Lord, he said. This must not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle in my path because the way you think is not God's way, but man's. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, for those of us who have arrived in this sacred place today, we begin our pilgrimage in the footsteps of the three little children of Fatima, who had the great privilege of the apparitions here in this very place 101 years ago at this time. Many of us this morning were traveling from various parts of Northern Ireland to be here as part of our annual pilgrimage. And as I was reflecting on the purpose of pilgrimage, the example of Mary came very much to my mind. What did Mary do in her life? And two words became apparent to me. The first thing that Mary did was trust despite the adversity and the challenges of her life. She was a young woman in a very patriarchal society who discovered herself with a child inexplicably. And yet, when the words of the angel Gabriel reached her ears, she was, after a time, very contented. She placed her trust in the will of God for her life. For those of you who gather in this place, you have brought your trials and tribulations, 
your fears, your families, and all the ailments that assail you and them. Like Mary, we are invited to place our trust in God, in Jesus, in this very spot. Trust can be difficult. It can, we can be overwhelmed by the thoughts and feelings of pain and suffering. And yet still, Mary trusted. The second great gift that Our Lady gives to us is the gift of her humility. She didn't fight God back. She didn't say no. She said yes. Perhaps she didn't at the time fully understand the message and mission that was being given to her. But she didn't allow that to put her off or to deter her saying yes. Trust and humility, my friends, are the cornerstones of the Christian life. They are what root us in the person of Jesus Christ. In the gospel, we hear the words of Jesus, Peter, upon this rock, I build my church. Peter then became the next great example of that faith, trust, hope, and humility that Mary herself accepted. Peter was not a perfect man. He was filled with doubts and fears. He was filled with dread and all the emotions of any human person. And yet Jesus founded his church, the papacy, on Peter. We are invited then to be followers of Jesus Christ in the example of St. Peter and in the example of Mary. And for those of you who begin your pilgrimage today, I invite you in the days ahead to reflect, to walk with Mary in her journey, leaving your trials and tribulations and fears and prayers in the very site where she stood 101 years ago. With great confidence, we lift up our hearts in prayer to the Lord whose glory surpasses that of the angels, that he graciously hear our supplications for the church and for all peoples. That by the protections of the holy angels, the church may live in peace and be freed for all her enemies. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer but that by the ministry of the angels, our sufferings be taken up to the very throne of God, and that we be guided by them on the road to the salvation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as we continuously seek the face of God, which the angels contemplate without ceasing, we may one day attain, it, attain eternal joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the angel, guardian of each nation, inspire their citizen to love liberty, and may he defend them from the temptation to dominate others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the little children and the young be not deceived by the wiles of the, the enemy, but be ever protected by those who continuously live in the presence of God. We pray of the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the holy angels, by their presence, comfort the afflicted, the persecuted, and the sick, and in the hour of death, score the dying to the heavenly Jerusalem. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, our God, you send an angel to comfort your agonizing son in the hour of his passion. Send your glorious ministers to accompany us on our earthly pilgrimage and then lead us to our eternal home. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we ask the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name as we venerate the blessed ever Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and Antonio our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you and their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, 
and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll now bless any religious objects that you have with you. Um, we ask the Lord's blessing upon them that as we use them, we will be reminded of the presence of the Lord and the care and protection of the Mother of God. May Almighty God bless these objects, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.